Hi, this is Philip with G6 Technology Services. In this video, we're going to be going over how to manually update the firmware on Sophos UTM9 if you're running the Essentials version that does not include automatic firmware updates. So the first thing we'll need to do is log into our web admin, and then we can use the shortcut button here next to version information to get to the up-to-date section. And we'll go to Advanced. And we'll need to click the link over here to get to the download package section. So once this page loads, we need to go down to UTM, then V9, then up to date. And here we have an archive of all of the up to date packages since 2012. So this is where it gets a little bit confusing and it might look a little bit uh, unnerving seeing all these things here, but we need to scroll all the way to the bottom to get to the most recent packages. And then we need to go over to our web admin again and go back to overview and we'll look at current firmware version. So, well, this is a lie. It is not up to date, but that's just because it doesn't check automatically. So as far as it knows, it is up to date. Uh, so we're on 9.510-5. So we need to go back over to our FTP page here, and we'll locate 9.510-0005, or just two zeros. So this is the one that we'll need here, because our current version is the one that's on the left. So we need to go... And it has two versions here. So this package is 9.510.005.2.6.0005, or whatever that is. So this is the one we have to start with. If we jump straight to the newest version, then we're missing a step. And you do have to have all the intermediate packages until you get to the most recent one. If you skip any of them, or you try to skip some at the beginning and just go to the later ones, it will fail. So I've already downloaded these, but all you have to do is just click them and it'll download. And uh, you can tell which ones you need because they're the larger ones. There's um, here you can see 170 megs and this one's only 66 bytes. And so what we have here is the actual file and then it gives you a signature so you can verify that it wasn't tampered with or corrupted during the download. But we're just gonna skip that process for now. So here we have our 510.005 uh, is the first one, so we'll need to get this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And like I said, we've already gotten those downloaded, so we can close out of this and we'll upload them to the UTM now. So under Advanced, we'll go to Up to Date File, click our folder, choose File, and then we'll go over to Downloads. And then here are our files that we have. So our 510.5 is the first one. So we'll upload that, start upload. Okay, and then we'll need to hit apply. And now we can see that our package was successfully imported. So we'll just hit refresh at the top to clear this out. Hit our folder. And we basically just repeat this exact same thing through all the different packages. So I'll just skip through that so you don't have to be bored to death. Okay, now that our last package has been imported, we can go back over to the Overview tab. And we can see now that they are listed here and they're in the right order. So we have the next version, 600-5, then 6015, 6023, 6031, 6042. So we'll just want to double check that everything is here uh, because once you hit update, if it has one missing, then the whole thing will fail and it'll delete all of these out of the cache and you'll have to re-import them again. So I'm just going to go back to Advanced and go back to our FTP here. And 
and it says our current version 9.510-5 which is right here so we have one two three four five five files one two three four five okay so they're all here so if you would like to do it immediately all you have to do is click update to latest version now and it will install them all in order for you if you'd like to schedule it to happen at a later time you don't have to schedule all of them if you just schedule the latest one then it will run all of the previous ones before that so you don't have to worry about it and uh, you can set this to any time in the future and it'll just run by itself and reboot and it should be all up to date so I usually like to uh, to be there when it's updating just in case anything happens and it depends on your setup if this is just for a home or you're having it uh, update itself over a holiday or vacation or weekend or something like that and it's not important if it goes down you can just fix it later then you can schedule it and I've never actually had it fail scheduling it automatically or running it manually so it's it's fine to run it automatically but I just prefer to be there in person so that's up to you and another thing that's good to do is just to make a quick backup before doing updates so if it does uh, you know have some catastrophic thing that happens and it's corrupted and unrecoverable you can at least restore from a backup and get yourself up and running pretty quickly so I usually recommend having uh, backups set up automatically um, in order to do that we just go over under management backup and restore and uh, go to automatic backups and yeah so it looks like if you do have the essentials version that is not enabled either but in the paid licenses which we use here uh, you can just have it email you a backup every day which I would recommend doing just so you have it uh, they're not very big and you can delete all but the most recent one if you want to so we can just make one manually so we'll go ahead and just create it now so we'll just do in a comment and we can create our backup now so we can see here our backup uh, before update is right here so we can email that to ourselves or just download it to the computer so we'll just download it and if you're worried about someone getting their hands on the data you can optionally encrypt it and we'll click on download and we'll just save it here in our downloads and that's downloaded now so we'll just close out of this that way if anything happens we can restore quickly so we'll go back to up to date and we'll go ahead and click update to latest version now and it will tell us that's going to take a while and then it brings up this uh, pop-up so that you can watch it. I'm just going to close out of that because I don't like it there, but it doesn't matter. And we can watch the status as it goes through each uh, phase. And we can see in our list here 9.600-5 uh, that is the first package that it's working on. So this is going to take a while. I'll just leave this up on the screen and fast forward through it so you can see how it looks, but we won't watch it in real time because it's probably going to take several minutes. Okay, looks like all of our update packages were installed, and it tells us that the installation was successful. It took about five and a half minutes. And we can see the status for each package all the steps were successful so it is going to reboot so we'll go ahead and close out of that and it will take a few minutes for the system to reboot so we'll come back when that has finished okay our system is rebooted so we'll just log back in And now we can see we're on 9.604-2. So if we just pop back over to our FTP site here, we'll just double check. 
that this is in fact the latest version, which I believe it is. And yep, all the way at the bottom, 604.002. Yep, 604.2. Okay, so that's it, we're up to date. We didn't need our backup file, so everything worked perfectly. Again, like I've said before, I've never actually had an up-to-date fail or corrupt the system or keep it from running. It's always been very reliable. That's one of the things that I love about Sophos UTM9. The company does a great job testing these packages before they release them, so you don't have to worry about installing something the day it's released because there might be bugs. That just doesn't happen. This is a commercial, professional product that's put out by a company who takes this stuff seriously. They do release updates in a timely manner whenever some security issue has become known, and at that point, it's safe to just install it right away because they've already tested it. And there are steps in place to validate the packages. As you could see when it was installing, it has all these pre-checks and post-checks that it does to make sure everything's working properly. So it's very stable and reliable. And I've been using this platform all the way back when it was still called Astaro before Sophos bought them. And it's essentially the same product. They just changed the color scheme and put their logo on it. But I've always liked this product, and I still like it. I think it's great. And uh, so, anyway, I hope you think the same thing. I hope that you like the product. I hope you liked the video and found it useful. If you have any questions that you don't feel that I addressed in the video. If you just leave those in the comments, I will try to get back to you. And if you would like to open a paid support case um, to talk about anything in, in greater detail, you can use the information in the video description to get in touch with us. Other than that, hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.